If you are playing a druid who can cast conjure animals, you might want some crocodile miniatures. Commercially, four of these will cost you around $32, so I decided to make my own and try out figure painting. In this video, I'll show you what I did and hopefully give you some useful ideas. I have a sub $200 Monoprice Mini Delta 3D printer, and I found a swamp alligator figure by Mr. Sterling on Thingiverse. It's number 4165302. So I printed up four copies, each of which took about 30 minutes, and I was quite impressed with how much detail my inexpensive FDM 3D printer was able to produce. Of course, if you don't have a 3D printer, you can buy unpainted models for only three to four dollars each, but I was trying to make some minifigs without buying anything. I used the default settings on my slicing software, which made a brim around the base of my figures that I had to take off using a grinder and a large file. If I were doing this again, I would turn that option off because the base on this figure is just fine for printing. After I had the base in good shape, I used a set of needle files to remove excess PLA streamers from around the legs, and then it was ready to prime. I used an upside down piece of masking tape to hold the figures to a cardboard box and used a can of plastic compatible paint plus primer spray paint I had in the garage. I did one light coat, waited for 20 minutes, then did a heavier coat, which I let dry for another hour. I got out my son's craft basket and grabbed his paint brushes and acrylic paint set. These are not fancy model paints or special brushes. If you don't have any on hand, you can buy a set at a craft store for 10 to 15 bucks. I went on the internet and searched for reference photos of crocodiles, and found that a lot of them are actually not green, as you might imagine. Australian saltwater crocs are dark green, but there's a lot of yellows, grays, and blacks in the crocodile color scheme as well. I had four figures, and I wanted to try out different color combinations on them, but in an effort to keep the total amount of paint and brushes under control, I decided to only use two base colors and two dry brush colors to make the four combinations. The first color I applied was a mix of white, yellow, and brown to make a creamy yellow, which I used to coat the necks of all four miniatures. Then I added a dot of black to turn this into a gray, which I used for the base body color on two of the figures. Next, I used a base of green with a little bit of gray and black added to it to make a dark green, which I used as the base body color on the other two figures. I actually added more black than I needed, so I had to move some of the green with just a little of the black over to a third well for the dark green, and then I'm going to use the greenish black paint afterwards um, for dry brushing in the next step. So at this point, I have two sets of nearly identical figures. I hit them with a hair dryer for about five minutes to accelerate the drawing so that I could move on to adding a dry brushed highlight to accent the high points. After the base coat was dry, I put some of the leftover almost black into a dry brush, wiped most of it off, and then dry brushed the back of one of the green figures and one of the gray figures. This left black paint only on the high points. For the other two figures, I added a lot of yellow to my leftover gray color, making a muted yellow. I dry brushed this muted yellow onto the backs of the remaining gray and dark green figure. In this way, I was able to get four uniquely different body color schemes without mixing up too many different colors of paint. I felt that the gray-yellow crocodile was a bit bright, so I got a brush wet and put a little bit of black on the back and tail to darken it up and give it some character. I also got the brush extra wet, picked up a tiny bit of black, and washed the throat in a bit of very watered down black, which I immediately wiped away. This fills in the crevices with a darker color and slightly stains the neck area. Not shown is me deciding that the green black crocodile was too dark, so I dry brushed some bright white onto its back. If I were doing it again, I'd probably use a gray here instead of pure white, as I got a bit more than I intended to on the model. After this, it was time to hit all the figures with the hair dryer again to dry them out before the detail work. Crocodiles are a nice easy figure to start with because they don't have weapons or clothes, and you can basically paint them with just a few different shades over the entire body. The exception of this is where I use toothpicks to lay down fully saturated colors directly from the white, black, red, and yellow bottles to make some details pop. Specifically, I'm using white along the mouth area to suggest teeth. 
Later, I put some black dots in the white area to give the impression of separate teeth. I tried out black, red, and yellow eyes. The black eyes look the most realistic, but the red eyes on the dark green crocodile look appropriately demonic. The yellow eyes on the gray-black crocodile were my least favorite, so I fixed them by adding a single vertical line using a fine point sharpie. After that, they became my favorite eyes. For the bodies, I think that the gray-black crocodile body is probably the most realistic looking color scheme. Although the green-black body looks like how you imagine a crocodile should look if you don't really look at reference photos. Once the crocodiles were finished, I decided to flock the bases with some random stuff I had around the house. Here I'm painting the base of the gray-yellow crocodile with white glue, and then dumping paver sand over the base to cover it. I also experimented with brass powder and aluminum powder for two of the other crocodiles, which gives interesting colors, but the grains are not big enough to give a nice texture. I decided to paint my almost white paving sand using black acrylic paint and some water to get some gray sand for the last base. Obviously, if you purchased professional flocking material, you'd have a lot of different color and texture options. The next day, I sprayed on three quick coats of gloss clear coat with just a minute or two between each layer. This gives them a bit of shine and will protect the acrylic paint and helps to lock down the flocking to the bases. Overall, I'm very happy with the level of detail my 3D printer was able to put on these small figures, and I feel like they came out exceptionally well for just doing two or three main colors per crocodile. The combination of a base color plus a dry brush color plus a few accent details was relatively easy and quick to do, and I'm very happy with the results and can't wait to conjure these guys up at the next gaming session. Which of the body and eye colors do you like the best? Let me know in a comment.